Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you are having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial, we're gonna make some butterflies and we're gonna talk about butterflies and just some cool symbolism that relates to, um, well, to faith, to Christ's uh, death and resurrection. So, as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm leaning. Sorry. I think that'll be better. Um, feel free to sprinkle if you would like to and all that good jazz. Hey, Linda. Hi, Teresa. Hey, Brenda. Hi, another Linda and Lana and Barbara. There's lots of you guys hopping on. Okay, now it looks like I'm leaning the other direction. Well, I apologize for that. Okay, so let me tell you my story. Um, I had planned yesterday to come live a second time after we made the Life is Better in Flip Flops. I'm just looking at my phone. After we made that project, I planned to come live and do butterflies. But here's, oh, that's better. Okay, but here's the thing. They weren't, they didn't have that extra, that something that made them different. Um, I'll show you what I did have. My plan yesterday was to make some cute butterflies and put them on some ball caps. Like for example, this one right here. This is one of the ones I made yesterday, which is still pretty darn cute. And I'll tell you how I made that. And then maybe to add some rosettes or something like that. So that was my plan for yesterday. But I wasn't completely satisfied, so I just decided to hold off and to try making butterflies again in the morning. And, um, and so I think that what I've stumbled onto is even better. So I hope you'll stay with me. I'm not gonna give it away unless you wanna look behind me and you might notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff that's stuffed like bunnies and eggs and mason jars and bumblebees that might give you a little clue um so okay so uh we are going to be using magnolia design company's beautiful butterfly butterfly stencil and their um inks i'm just pinning my link um and you can use whatever colors appeal to you. There we go. Okay. Um, so I was using some bright colors. And um, yeah, I thought, I thought that I would keep going with the really bright colors. So let me show you a couple of the ones that I made yesterday. And, um, and then I'll show you, we'll do one. Um, Okay, so here's the perfect example of one that I made yesterday. It's cute, it really is. It looks sort of tie-dye, don't you think? I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. It kind of is like this one. This is a great stencil set. You know, I'm always looking for stencils that have a ton of different uses, and um, there's a lot of different things you can do to layer with these to make really um, sweet butterflies. So, okay, so that, here's another example right here. Okay, so to make that, what I did, and that we're gonna actually do it, is I used oh, a bunch of little pieces of, this is painter's drop cloth. Or maybe this is canvas. Yeah, I think this is canvas from Walmart that I'm working with today. Um, so to do this one right here, I used a variety of colors. You can obviously tell that. And I used the back, the back piece to this stencil set. There's three butterflies. Each one has the back piece, the underneath layer. So there's one of them that is an underneath layer. Here's another one. And here's the third. So I used this one on here. And then I used 
just blue. This was Vivid Cerulean ink and Pineapple Yellow ink. And inks are back in stock, except I think maybe the orange might possibly be out. I can't remember. I didn't use orange on this. I used this hot pink, which is called Fuchsia Rose. And I used purple, which is called Amethyst Orchid. And I just smooched it around and then used a squeegee to put it all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you build the next layer. And I'm, I'm planning to just ramble because I have a lot to show you. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, yeah. Okay, so here's the underneath layer, and this is how I created this sort of tie-dye look on these butterflies. And this is pretty cool, but the next thing I'm gonna show you is even cooler, I think. Okay. Um, I am working off of one of my favorite crafting surfaces. This is a Wilton cake board from Walmart. You can get a pack of four of them for about $4. Okay, now I'm looking for the top. This is the top of this bottom butterfly. Stay with me, you guys. I promise it'll be worth it. And we're going to do this other kind that is really cool. Okay, so I'm just going to basically lay this on top of my base butterfly and you don't have to get it perfect in fact I think it looks a little interesting when it's just slightly off the um, original okay and then I'm going to use some black ink and you guys what I did in between is I used my iron and some of this you should see my craft room it's a disaster some of this um, parchment paper in between my iron and these pieces to heat set them before I went on to the second layer because I didn't want it to run or get uh, just mix up. You know, I wanted it to stay its separate self. Where are my squeegees? They're hiding under a pile of stuff. Okay, so this is the black ink and I'm just gonna take a little blob probably need a little bit more than that and I'm basically just going to go over my stencil I'm going to resist the urge to go over and over and over and over and over and over it because that's when you can get bleeding or accidentally go out of the lines or just have a messy looking stencil okay I'm just pulling off the big globs in my little tub over here and this is what this looks like right now and here's what it looks like when we take it off oh my gosh it's really cool okay so I just threw my butterfly in a little tub over here face down so it can soak in some water until I can get to the kitchen sink and dry it and wash and dry it. Look how pretty that is. Can you guys see with all the different colors? So I'm kind of thinking maybe we could do something like this other idea with these guys because I bet that would be pretty too. I love these tie-dye looking ones. So those are, um, where can I put these so that I won't mess them up? Maybe we will come back to that. Okay, um, so then this morning I started with this idea of, you know how I love to paint over the top of a stenciled area. Um, I love to turn the inks essentially into watercolors and then paint. And then I'll heat set it with an iron and it'll be permanent. And so I painted this one and I thought, Hmm, that's kind of interesting to paint over the top of it. So, about an hour or two ago, I took the same stencil and did it over and over and over. I didn't wash in between these impressions. 
and I'm going to show you how to do it. I let this dry fully and then I've heat set it with a hot iron so it's good to go. It's not going to bleed from, you know, putting water on it or a color. Okay. And um, so this is what we have. I love this middle sized butterfly, but really they're both awesome. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how to, to use the inks to basically turn them into a paint. And when I'm doing that, I like to work on a glass paint, a glass um, plate, because then you can mix your stuff up. When you mix water with your inks on a paper plate, it tends to all get absorbed into the plate. So when you're using glass, that is nicer. Oh, I did not see who gave me those stars, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so um, really we could do absolutely any color that we would like, but I think I'm going to do a mix for this one of this blue that's called Vivid Cerulean and Turquoise. Um, I did another one using orange and yellow that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, whoops. Okay, and I'm just using some of these little mini spatulas to take a small blob out of my ink and put it on my plate. Can you guys see that? It's right here. And now I'm going to use my handy dandy Magnolia Design Company Mister that has um, distilled water in it. This is what I spritz into my chalk paste before I close the jar. And don't use regular uh, tap water for that. But anyways, this works great when you're painting too. Okay. And I'm just gonna take a brush, an artist brush, and start mixing, but I don't want it to be completely mixed. You'll see why in just a minute. Okay, and then we're gonna take our butterfly that I used black ink, I let it dry, and then I heat set it. And this is canvas fabric from the fabric department at Walmart. Can you guys see okay? I think you can. Okay, so I am just going to basically paint over the top of my whole butterfly and then I'm going to wipe it off and it will soak into the canvas that doesn't already have the black ink on it. So I'm trying to kind of grab my different colors so this butterfly is not just a mix of the two colors so it is um, It's like turquoise and blue. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up carefully. So can you see what I've done? I just painted over the whole wing. And now I'm gonna take some paper, uh, some paper towels and I'm going to blot off um, the excess on my wing. And then I'm going to take one of these antibacterial wipes that I just happen to have here in my craft room. Um, but you could, just, you could use a wet paper towel or pretty much anything. And what I, here's what it looks like right now. Isn't that pretty? And what I want to do though is get the ink, the blue ink off of the top of my black so that black stands out again. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I think we're gonna do some, some more of this idea with these ones too. Okay, so let me get closer. I wish you could see it in person because, here we go, it's, it's like more turquoisey here, more blue here, and you can keep going if you want to add it a little bit darker. 
you can put another layer on and then blot it and use a wipe to get it off of the black part. Okay, let's do the other wing. But isn't that pretty? Okay, this is, this is not even the cool part yet. <laughs> so stay with me. Okay, I'm just getting some more of this blue and turquoise that I have all mixed together. I'm grabbing little bits where there's more turquoise. I'm trying not to go outside of the outline of this butterfly. So I really wanted to go live with part of this butterfly stuff yesterday, but I just wasn't satisfied and um, I don't ever want you guys to say, yeah, it was okay, but you know, I've seen a hundred other crafters do the exact same thing. I always want my crafts to have a little something extra and then also I generally want them to have something meaningful and there's so much awesome symbolism about the butterfly. So this is what our butterfly looks like now and I'm gonna blot this other wing and then I'm just going to use my wipe to get the, the blue ink off of the black parts. So that looks real crisp. Oh my gosh, this is just beautiful. Okay, and here's our blue butterfly. Our blue and turquoise butterfly. Thank you. Amanda says, very pretty. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll do something with this one in just a minute. Um, let's do another one, okay? And then I'll show you the next part. Um, I'm gonna cut off another one of these little butterflies that I made in advance. Uh, they're dry, they've been heat set, so this black ink isn't gonna run or get mixed in with what I'm doing. I'm gonna try to get rid of most of this blue that's on my plate. Oh, and I've learned a new trick from one of my viewers this morning. Um, I was complaining about my glue gun being so, having so many strings on it and just being such a total mess. And you guys, she told me that after you use your glue gun, while it's still cooling down, to take a dryer sheet, any brand, and go over your glue gun, you know, while it's still warm with the dryer sheet, and it will take everything off. And it's still messy, but look how much better it is. So if you have a messy, messy glue gun, Think about using a dryer sheet as it's cooling down to, um, to pull all that, that gunk off. Okay, so we're gonna use yellow and orange and we're making a monarch butterfly. And I'm gonna just take a little blob of orange and a little blob of the yellow. Okay, and then I'm gonna spray some distilled water in here. For this project, you could you could do this with sink water. It doesn't have to be distilled water. But don't put don't use a, a mister to put sink water in your chalk paste to keep it soft. That is not a good idea. You'll, you'll regret it. Sink water or tap water has a lot of impurities in it and you don't want that in your chalk paste. Okay, so I have my yellow and orange. 
And you should be able to swipe the comments to the left or right or up and down if they're in your way. Oh, and also I put a link down here, I pinned it, to the butterfly stencil and to the inks in case anyone wanted to look. And it has three blue, but two or three blue butterflies. Um, that'll help you find it. Okay, so I'm just mixing my orange and yellow, but not completely, to do this monarch butterfly. Because you know, they're kind of, sometimes they're darker and sometimes they're lighter. Um, they tend to be a mix, at least the ones that I see here in Georgia, of yellow and orange. Okay, so here's our little stenciled and heat set butterfly all ready to go. I'm just painting over the wings. Oops. I'm trying not to use just one color or just the mixed color. I'm trying to grab little bits of both colors here. I'll hold this up in just a second. Oh, this is so pretty. This really is a good there's so many different things you could do with this one, this stencil. Okay, so here's our butterfly, and I'm going to blot the, um, the excess off, and then I'm going to use a wipe to wipe it off of the black ink that's been heat set. And that just makes it so that black is crisp and full on black again. And it's not, you know, toned down by the... Okay, so look at this. I really wish you could see it in person. Like this Monarch Butterfly has some areas that are oranger and then some that are more yellow. Let's do the other wing. So if you haven't guessed what the next step is yet, um, it's stuffing them. You can make, uh, I'm making one for a hat. You can make a pin, you like a lapel pin or you know a pin to go on a bag or backpack or something like that. You could, um, you could make a refrigerator magnet. There's a lot of different things. You could make a t-shirt and use this very same technique. Okay, here's the other wing. And now you can probably see a little better why you want to blot it off and then why you want to get it off the black as well. And this doesn't seem to be removing the yellow too much. So here's our beautiful monarch butterfly. I will get close-up pictures of everything when I'm all finished. Okay, so let's move on. Now, these are the pins. They're just these little lapel pin things that I used the other day when I was working with that vintage that old um, torn apart quilt that Ann sent me. Um, so this is one option. Then I think also it would be fun to make these for your refrigerator or if you have like a piece of art, we'll make one with this and I'll show you. If you have some tin, let me get this. 
um, some tin hanging around like like this. We worked on this a few weeks ago. Do you guys remember that? Anyways, I'm going to show you how you could make a magnet for a piece like that. All right. Let me just get my workspace cleaned off just a tad and put the lids back on my inks. You guys, these inks last forever. You can make t-shirts, tea towels, totes, little zip pouches. Um, I thought of something else. I mean, you can just do a ton of different things with them. So I, that's why I love them. I love working with ink. Okay, we have these two butterflies that we've just made. And we're going to turn them into this. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Let's put a magnet on this guy right now. If you are working with these button magnets, hard to get apart. Um, I do want to say one thing. If you have pets or little ones around that might possibly put this in their mouth and swallow it, um, you just need to be super, super careful because they're really, really not good for pets and little people. So do your project up um, away from those little people and keep track of how many button magnets you've used and all that business. Okay, so let's put a little blob of glue on the back of this little stuffed butterfly. Okay, I made this one. This is when I was like, okay, I'm onto something that I like, that I think is sufficiently different than the other projects that I've done. So see, look how cute that would be. And just having it be stuffed just adds so much. Um, I also want to stuff one of those, uh, one of these ones. So let's do that one first. And then, uh, and then we'll move on. I'm just going to roughly cut around. You could use pinking shears to cut this out if you want. I'm just going to use regular scissors because I don't want anything to distract from these beautiful butterflies. That's what the name of the stencil is, beautiful butterflies. But you certainly could use decorative scissors if you wanted. And I'm not being super persnickety about exactly how far out I'm cutting. If it's if it doesn't look good once I've glued it, you can trim it up after. Okay. This one has been heat set too. Isn't that pretty? All right. And I'm just using, I ironed this before I came live because it was a crumpled mess, but I'm just going to use this um, to attach my butterfly to, and it's the same kind of fabric, and then I will trim it. But you know what, I'm going to at least take it off the piece. Okay, and when you're stuffing things like lemons or bunnies, do you guys remember these projects? Or, or little mason jars or flowers or bumblebees and crowns. You need to remember to leave a sufficient opening where you can put your, your stuffing in. All right, so I'm gonna just start with the top of this butterfly 
and my hot glue gun. And I'm gonna go around uh, his or her little antenna and up to the top of the wings. And I'm just gonna lay it down on my piece and press it down. This is when it's really good to be working with a low temperature hot glue gun. Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much for the stars. Okay, so we're started on this. We just have the top part glued down. Now I'm just gonna lift up the sides and do the exact same thing. And I'm gonna leave the whole bottom of this butterfly open and then we'll glue it shut after we stuff it. And I'll show you my stuffing. Um, you know, I'm always saying use what you have whenever possible. If you don't have any pillow stuffing or whatever this polyfill stuff is, um, but you have a pillow that you don't love anymore, I have done this, feel free to take it apart and to use what's inside your pillow, especially if you were just gonna donate or throw it away anyways. Okay, now I'm just cutting around the front my butterfly from this big square and I can always come back and trim it up after it's stuffed if it doesn't look good So here we have our two pieces of a butterfly. You could stencil the other side if you wanted, but um, I'm not going to, and here's our opening. And my, my fluff came from Walmart. And it's Polyfill Ultra Plush. It was about $5. I just keep it in this drawer over here and then I just reach in and grab a little handful whenever I'm stuffing something, which seems to be a lot lately. And so I'm just gonna take a little bit and put it in and I'm gonna push it up on one side towards the top of one of the wings. You can fill these as full or not as you like, but it's all personal preference. Let's do a little teeny bit more. smoosh it around after I glue it down. Okay, so it's full. And now I'm just going to push that stuffing up so I can use my glue gun to go around the edges and not get my polyfill stuck in it, if possible. And then I'm just pushing it down. I don't wanna have any of those weird puckers teeny bit of glue that's wanting to come out the bottom. And here's our little stuffed uh, stuffed piece, which would be super cute on any kind of tin or metal, anything you have at home or on a refrigerator. You guys, these would also look darling on a cap. So, these are some caps that I picked up yesterday at Dollar Tree for $1. I got two of them. And, um, you know, I'm thinking it would be super cute. I won't use this one because it's got a magnet on it. But we might stuff another one. I think we will. And put that on one of the caps. And it, it'll look nice when it's glued down. 
Um, or this one could go possibly on this pink cap right here. Or it could go in a double with whatever kind of balls or whatever you might have in there. Um, so let's stuff one more and then I'll show you how we would glue it on. Okay, I need my back, my backing. And first thing I'm gonna do is cut my butterfly out. We're gonna do this blue one. I probably could cut both layers at the same time. Why did I not think about that? Where are my pins, my sewing pins? Here they are. Let's do that. That would be so much easier. from shifting from side to side. Okay, so <laughs> this is smart. I figured something out while I'm live um, that you can cut out both layers at the same time. Huh, who'd have thunk that? Obviously not me until just now. Are you guys tired of me stuffing things? Um, tell me in the comments if you like these 3D ideas that I've been doing lately. Hopefully you're not gonna say you're sick and tired of it because I'm still having fun doing that. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier. Why did I not think of this? So here's our two pieces of a butterfly. And take the pins off. Get my glue gun. And we'll start at the top. We'll leave the bottom open so we can stuff this little blue butterfly. Oops, I need some more glue. So I glued the top and one of the wings, and now I'm just going to start moving around. I'll go clear down to this butterfly's little bottom, whatever that thing is called. And, okay, when I did the first one, I didn't leave it open enough to really be able to get my stuffing in there so I kind of had to force it apart so I'm gonna leave this good and open all right here's our opening can you guys see So what do you guys think so far? Do you like this idea? Hi, Kim. Hey, Dorothy. Okay, so I've got some in and I want it to go up into the corner. So I'm just gonna use my scissors to push it into the top of this butterfly's wings. I 
I don't think I want it super fat because I'm going to put this one on a hat. I just want it mildly 3D. Okay, so I've got all my stuffing in and I'm just going to push it back so it doesn't get in the glue and oops. Well, darn, I have some stuffing poking out of the bottom. That's easy enough to fix. I'll just cut it off. Okay, and here's our little stuffed butterfly. just a little bit okay and here's our black cap oh I've got glasses on my hand you could buy a nice ball cap but I was just looking to craft with it so one dollar is my price it's a great price to craft with now you could add some rosettes of any color if you wanted but I'm just gonna do just the butterfly. I think that's gonna be super cute. And I'm gonna have him be partially on the, on the top part of the cap and partially on the bill of the cap. So I'm just running one bead of glue straight up and down to get my butterfly on here. And then I will loosely tack down this little butterfly's wings. Okay, and I'm opening the door because Mia's standing here crying. She has not felt good lately. And she's just being a drama queen. So, what do you guys think? Is that cute or what? I love it. I think there's so many things that you could do with these beautiful butterflies. Whether you do them uh, with the layering, where you do some kind of tie-dye, on the bottom piece first, and then you do the black over the top. So here's like, you can even see where I did my tie dye because I didn't get it washed quick enough. It's fine though. Um, there's the bottom, the bottom layer, and then here's the top. I did this one in all these different colors, and then I did the top when it was dry after I had heat set it with black. Uh, so I don't know which kind I like the best. I do really love this magnet idea. I think I'm gonna, let's make another magnet. I think I'm gonna make a bunch of those. And I am I'm not, um, I am working on some blessing boxes, but I don't have enough stuff ready yet. So I'll tell you as I get that more ready to go. And this next go around will be, um, will be a no purchase thing where you just probably look at my website and give me some business advice like what do you like the best so I know what kind of crafts to be doing and what kind of stencils to invest in etc. Okay look how cute that would be. what I wanted to show you guys. I hope you liked this project. Um, I feel like butterflies come in so many different colors. 
Did I show you all of the different ones that I made as I was figuring out what I wanted this craft to be? Oh, here's one where I painted all different colors in it and I did the butterfly. I just did the, um, the top layer in that sil sparkling silver ink. I don't love it that much. Here's one that I did with turquoise as the base layer and then the pink as the top. Um, here's the little, uh, the smallest butterfly that's kind of flying at an angle. I did the same thing, the underneath is purple and the top is teal. So if you guys do this project, really loving these. If you guys decide to do this project, I definitely want to see pictures and I want some ideas of what we could do with these. So if you have ideas, put those in the comments. That seriously helps me. But um, if you haven't already joined uh, Dreamy DIY, that's that Facebook group that I put together for all of us to be able to share crafting photos. Um, not Nothing that isn't pertaining to crafting or DIY projects, please. Anyways, um, you just can put it in the search bar here at Facebook, or if you're watching this on YouTube, go to Facebook and put it in your search bar, Dreamy, D-R-E-A-M-Y, and then there's a space, DIY. It should pull up this group that I've created. There's like 13,000 members. Um, it's going to ask you a couple of questions. Do you agree not to share other crafters' videos? And do you agree not to use this group to, for self-promotion? And if you answer both of those questions, um, we'll approve you. You can go on in and look at the tons of amazing... Oops, I just scared the dog. Tons, tons, tons of amazing projects that uh, you guys have made. It's really amazing. Um, so that is a great place to share beautiful butterflies if you end up doing anything, any kind of a project with the stuffed butterflies or the butterflies for anything else. And then share here in the comments what suggestions. Put sticks in them and mix them with some flowers. Okay, I love that idea. It's kind of this idea only it would be in a flower arrangement of some sort. And instead of it being eggs and bunnies, it could be a butterfly here or there. That is a great idea. What other suggestions have you guys made? Well, I'm gonna hop off and look at all of your suggestions. If you want to um, look at the beautiful butterfly stencil or any of the different colors of ink at Magnolia, I pinned my links right here and you should see maybe there's only two blue butterflies and then the two links are right there so you can just click on it it'll take you directly there you don't have to hunt it down um, and I just can't wait to sit down and read through all of your comments so let me know your thoughts feel free to sprinkle if you liked this video um, if you have questions let me know that in the comments too and I will um, get everything, well, first of all, I'm going to clean up my craft room because it's a disaster, um, and then I'll get pictures. I'll finish these projects, I'll get some pictures, and I will share those with you guys. All right, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. I have a mess here, so I'm, so don't, please don't screenshot any of that mess. It was the cat that we made. Isn't it cute? You could you could certainly do a rosette if you wanted. On here as well. Okie dokie. I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.